recently shared a short video and I got a lot of feedback. Now this video was of a really good buck I harvested a couple years ago here at the Proving Grounds during the late season or what we generically call the muzzleloader season. The Missouri Department of Conservation calls that the alternative weapon season because they allow a few pistols and even an addle addle if you know what that is to be used. But the big point of controversy on all the social media and YouTube and everything was that that's a really nice buck, but it's young. So Missouri's alternative weapon season is late season or post rut. And bucks tend to lose 20 or 30% of their body weight during the rut. I first learned this when I was a student at University of Georgia and we had captive deer there for research. And even in these small research pens, probably under an acre and very few deer in there and all the high quality protein feed they could eat, they ate some, more fell out bucks would still lose 20 to 30 percent of their body weight during the rut in that perfect environment. No hunters, no coyotes, whatever. So imagine the cost of the rut on a buck in the wild, chasing does up and down hills and hollers and trying to avoid predators and hunters. I tagged this really nice buck. We called him the trash man. Had some stickers on there. Usually when bucks turn non-typical, often that's as they mature, just like as we mature, we get more defects in our skin or skin tags or whatever. Based on our past history of that buck with trail camera images and me looking at the jaw after I harvested him, that buck was five years old. But post rut, he'd lost 20 or 30% of his body weight or maybe more. When I show you these trail camera pictures of that same buck just a few months earlier or pre rut, man, you can tell a huge difference. His neck merges with his chest as brisket and his shoulders are really filled out and he's just a big old brute of a buck. So based on all those comments, I appreciate y'all sharing that input. I want to talk about some tips to estimate a buck's age during the post rut. And we just got it set up front. They're going to lose 20 or 30 percent of their body weight in almost every habitat, you know, Iowa, Kansas, and where the bulk of us hunters hunt in timber country, our bucks don't have all those groceries of spilled grain. But even in the ag country, bucks lose a lot of weight pre-rut to post-rut. So I want to use another example here at the Proving Grounds. This buck was called Butter Bean. Now y'all know we have really high quality food plots. We use the release process. We do a lot of work with our native vegetation. Butter Bean was named that because he was a tubby boy. That buck. He just looked fat during the summer months and up to the pre-rut. We had several trail camera pictures of him. Man, he looked like he weighed 300 pounds. So I'm just saying he looked like it. He was the biggest body deer I'd ever seen in mountain country, especially here at the Proving Grounds. And then one afternoon, had a strategy course. The wind was out of south, so I'm looking south on a power line, a couple of bedding areas strategically located. And that buck was cruising mid-afternoon to scent check those bedding areas, stepped out in a power line. Man, he just looked huge, even bigger than normal. Made the shot, got down there to him. He was a big deer, big antlers, but he'd lost so much weight like those Texas deer, you know, small body, great big antlers. Man, he looked huge. And it's all good, man, we're congratulations, high five and taking pictures. And I remember this, I don't think it's on video, but I go to drag him up a really steep hill and I thought, Man, this is like take two steps and rest, take two steps and rest. And I about fell down. That buck had lost so much weight, I really gave it everything I had and he just started squipping up the hill. Well, when we got back here to the skin and shed, put him on a scale, he weighed 150 pounds whole weight or live weight, some people call it, 150 pounds. Now, no one would say, oh boy, that big old buck based on those summer pictures, weighed 150 pounds. Just another example. So when I'm looking at postseason bucks, I'm looking at, they're gonna lose a lot of weight. Do they still have pretty good looking shoulders? And I know some of that fat or some of that mass that they had in that neck going down to the brisket, well that's gonna be gone, so I've gotta up my standard. Is it within four inches of the brisket? Or is it a little pencil neck? I'm looking at all those characteristics we use to estimate a buck's age during the summer, the first of season, during the pre-rut, and even the first of the rut, and I'm shrinking them down just like their body weight, 20, 
And that's how you accurately estimate a buck's age during the post rut. Otherwise, you might be sitting up there, man, you're cold, you're hunting late, you still got a buck tag, buck comes in and you do what we're all taught, ignore the antlers, cover them up in your mind, look at the body and you're thinking, oh, well, that's a great immature buck. I gotta let him pass. It may be your target buck that's lost so much weight. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Upstand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Let's take one more example. This is a buck I'm still chasing here at the Proving Grounds. We call this buck Big Sal. Big Sal is a mature deer, and when you look at his images we had, his Moultrie Mobile images from this summer and early season, no doubt about it, that's a mature deer. Neck comes down to the brisket, great big chest, chest is bigger than the hams, belly's got a sag in it. No one's saying that buck's not mature. In fact, I saw Big Sal the 8th of November. Man, I was wanting to sling an arrow, but he was out of my range. He's about 35 yards and walking, and that's too far to risk on any deer, buck, doe, or fawn, because it's not hitting the target. I could have done that, I think, without any problem, but deer can react to the arrow, and the further they are, the more the reaction can be before the arrow gets there. But I had personal look, not just through a camera. Me sitting there watching at Big Sal, no doubt about it, if I didn't know that deer from the trail camera images, I still would have known he was mature and took the shot. Put all that behind us and look at more recent pictures. Big Sal clearly paid a price for participating in the rut. He's lost a huge amount of weight. I don't know how much weight he's lost because we haven't tagged him yet. We haven't put him on a scale. But he's clearly, if you look at him, that neck doesn't appear to merge near as close to the brisket on the chest as it did just even a month or two ago. And that belly, that belly's gone. He's been on what I call the rut diet. Now we know from GPS work at Penn State and Mississippi State and other schools, not, not just one school, totally different habitats. The bucks tend to move about 20% more a day. This is often based on yards or miles moved. Not that they're covering a bigger area, that may or may not be true, but more steps per day, about 20% more, and they consume or they stop to feed about 20% less. There can be motion sensors and collars and it tells us if a buck's head is down, feeding or up, alert or bedded. So 20% less feeding time. And if you and I, I probably need to do this diet, move 20% more a day, and consume 20% fewer calories, my belly would be gone too. Let's call that the rut diet. It's a simple diet. You don't need you know, that midnight diet plan on TV for $9.95 a month. Just do the rut diet, move more and eat less. And I promise you weight will come off. Bucks the same way. Those bucks are, again are moving about 20% more, consuming 20% less. And in most areas, there's less quality groceries. Acorns have been consumed or starting to rot if they're in the white oak family. The spilled corn in the cornfield has been consumed or sprouted. 4-H has been frozen several times now. There's just less groceries, so it's not as easy for bucks to recover that body weight. Keep all this in mind in the next few weeks while you're hunting, and that might help you take the shot versus passing the shot. And remember, we want to reduce all the criteria we use to estimate a buck about 20%. Was that neck merging with the brisket on the chest or is it now a few inches taller? Same deer. Is that belly, what we call a pot belly on a mature buck? And now he's a little trimmer? Could be the same deer. Are those shoulders not as well developed because he's lost some body mass? Remember, losing 20% of your weight. Think about that. That takes a 200 pound buck to a 140 pound buck. If you weigh close to 200 pounds, and you went down to 140, your jeans would be much smaller. You wouldn't have as maybe as big a belly. Your shoulders and thighs would have shrunk down. Apply that same knowledge to estimating a buck's age to compensate 
for the weight and body mass loss a buck goes through during the rut. Understanding these things about creation is a great way to get more enjoyment of the time we spend outside. But even more important than understanding these biological factors that happen to wildlife and humans, we need to focus daily on our understanding of the Creator's will for our life. And don't just understand it, apply it. Be a follower of Christ. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.